Hi, it's Ryan with Pacific Coast Hobbies, and we're going over the F450 made by DJI. I'm going to go over a quick setup on just how to go ahead and get this configured to your computer and get yourself rocking and rolling. First thing to do is just uh, go ahead and plug it in with your USB cable. Turn on your radio. And plug it in. That's the appropriate sound that you want to hear. And from there, you want to go to your computer and open up your software. First time you use the software, you go ahead and uh, register it. They will go ahead and send you a confirmation email. And then um, you go from there, go back in, enter that in, and be good to go. You only have to do it the one time. Uh, it's good to go ahead and check for your updates. Um, that's under tool, check for updates, and firmware upgrade. It's a really good place to start. Since this is a uh, F450, we got it set up in the quad rotor X4 formation. Uh, you see that you have your two red and two white. Those are your, your front whatever you choose. And you prefer to use the red because um, it's what works. Um, if you go ahead and you'll notice over here also you have a quad rotor plus six, quad hexarotor X6, hexarotor reversal Y6, a bunch of different formats you can go ahead and do. But we also have the F550, which is this big dog. And I just set up at the hexarotor X6. On this, we go ahead and we have right again as our forward front. If you want to have it as a, a plus six, that would just be one of the booms. The same as the 450. If you want a plus four, one boom would be your heading. Now, the 450 and the 330 are set up the same. The main difference on them is that size for one, but this is run off the 450s, run off the 30 amps for ESEs, and these are 18. And they do have smaller props on there, 8 inch props. These are 10 inch props. The uh, 10 inch props are only to be used when you're using a 3 cell battery, that is for the 550 and the 450. If you want to go ahead and you have a 4 cell battery, you have to switch it over and use an 8, um, eight inch blade on both of them. Now that we're back into the software, we're going to go into the TX Cali, which is the transmitter calibration. Um, over here, for your receiver type, this is just your, your basic setup. So if you just follow this, you're going to be up and flying in no time. Go ahead and put it under tradition. And the second part is cutoff type is intelligent. Intelligent is once it lands, the props will still roll for a little bit before they shut off. If you put it under immediately, once you throttle down, your props will stop rolling. Down to the third part is the command stick calibration. You want to go ahead, push start, and move your transmitter. So when you use, move your throttle sticks, when you move it to the right, you want to make sure it moves to the right. If you move it up, it moves to the right. If it does not do that, you want to go ahead and change these switches over here, uh, either from normal to reverse. Uh, this is a Spectrum DX8, so this is set up for DX8. Um, I like to go ahead and do the calibration twice just to make sure. Sometimes it just gets a little bit fine-tuned when you do it the second time around. So I'm going to go ahead and push start, switch it around, up, down, up, down, all the way to the right, to the left, and you can see when you move it right to the left it comes right to the center and then throttle up and down. So when you have your throttle, you want it all the way down because that would be, you are starting from zero position. And then push finish. Now, on number four, don't really get into that right now. That's more of an advanced setting. Um, there are other videos out there you, that you can go ahead and check out. Um, but for our sake, we're just gonna go ahead and go on to step number five, which is also really important. And that is your automatic attitude, which is a, a manual. And you can see when I flip my gear switch, it moves back and forth. Um, when you get this, it usually starts off in your fail safe. So what you have to do is when you want to get into attitude mode, you want to go into your DX8 settings, 
go into your DX8 settings, into servo setup, adjust the travel under gear. Now for the DX8 and what I find out that works the best is to have it at 80% and 90%. I'll go ahead and show you. If you go ahead and adjust it a little bit, you can see how it, it moves in increments here. That's why I just found out if you move it to 80%, 90%, it's pretty good in the, in the beginning. It's pretty good in the middle of both. If you have it too close to the edge of it, we found out that it can go ahead and go into fail safe mode automatically. So I just try to get it in the center, which I found out to be 80% and 90%. Now for autopilot, start off by clicking default just to go ahead and calibrate it. And then what we find that works really well is to set up your basic gain for pitch and roll at 200%, your yaw at 100%, and your vertical at 100%. Um, for the 450, we also like to change the attitude gain down to 90%. It's just a little too aggressive if it is at 100%. Uh, you're welcome to go ahead and adjust these numbers, but um, you'll notice that when you do go ahead and change it, change it at 10% at a time for your safety. Uh, that way you can really see what's going on. Um, when I first did this, I had the vertical at 200% as an error, and it was taken off on me. Mistake, but it's just something that you got to be careful about. They, these numbers do affect how you set this up. Uh, for right now, the remote adjust, these are all in enabled for right now. But again, what we were talking about, X1, X2, which are different channels, once you get into more advanced settings, you can go ahead and adjust these. At this time, we don't have a gimbal set up on any of these quads, so we just go ahead and we just turn it off. But you can see all the different um, settings here. The X1, F1, F2, you can go ahead and change your different pitch and roll for your gimbal and you can also change the gain on it. So for right now, we just have it at off. Now on voltage, you go ahead and have it on, on and it's, you can see I have it set up on 3S LiPo. That's again, because I have a three cell battery set up for it. If you go ahead and you decide you want to use your four cell battery, this is where you go ahead and change it right here. Uh, so, first part one, protection switch, turn it on. Number two, battery. You got to select the battery that you're going to use. And then number three, you have your first level protection. And then four is your second level protection. Your first level protection, when you get down to your voltage too low, here we have it set at 10.85. This is going to blink yellow. That's how you know you're getting close. Once you get down to 10.4, it's going to blink red and it's going to go ahead and automatically land. Once it starts blinking yellow, you know you want to bring it home and start landing it as soon as possible, just as a safety precaution. Two factor safety for you and your quad. The second, your batteries. Um, better part of all these things, they are dangerous. You have to respect them. They will cut you up. And uh, I've not seen it, but I've seen footage on the internet that you should go ahead and uh, make sure you look at it as a flying lawnmower. One part that I did leave out though, when you go ahead and we make these changes, make sure you go ahead and click the right button. What that does is writes it into your NASA bore. So gimbal, right, autopilot. This is how you do any types of adjustments. And then we're sticking with the quad rudder X4. And then from there, what you want to go ahead and do should be good to go.